Hi, welcome back uh, to the lecture series on major theory with course code MMTC202. In previous lecture, we have seen that uh, any translation invariant Borel measure on Rn is scalar multiple of the Lebesgue measure. Uh, precisely that uh, theorem states that uh, if uh, if uh, mu is a translation invariant Borel measure Borel measure on Rn, then there exists a constant C such that uh, mu of A is equal to C times Lebesgue measure of A for every Borel set A, Borel subset A of Rn. Now uh, uh, we have following exercise, uh, so I will leave this exercise for you. Uh, if uh, mu is a translation invariant Borel, Borel measure on Rn, if mu is a translation translation uh, translation invariant translation invariant translation invariant Borel major on Rn then there exists a constant C belongs to R such that uh, such that mu of A is equal to C times Lebesgue major of A for every subset A of R so here this theorem is true only for uh, the Borel subset of R, but uh, uh, in this exercise you can see that uh, this equation, this mu of A equal to C times of lambda A, it holds for every subset A of R n. Now uh, we discuss a uh, uh, concept that's a uh, convergence in measure. Convergence in convergence. In nature. Okay, convergence in nature. So for this uh, access new we are fixing major space again. Uh, the collection uh, let uh, let access mu let access mu be a major space be a major space be a major space. Uh, the collection of all uh, the collection of all uh, measurable functions the collection of all the co <coughs> collection of all measurable functions measurable functions the collection of all measurable functions uh, on x x dot will be denoted by will be denoted by will be denoted by m okay m. that is that is this m is equal to those functions from x to r uh, belongs to r power x means f is a function from x to r such that f is measurable, such that f is measurable. So this m, it's the calcium, it's, it's, it's the collection of all measurable functions on x. Okay, it's a function from x to r, collection of the functions f, uh, which are the functions from x to r. So r power x, uh, it, it denotes the collection of all functions from x to r, okay. So f is a function from x to r, such that this f is measurable. That's a our m 
and we have seen that this m this m this collection of all major rule function is closed with respect to the algebraic operation and also it's closed with respect to the leads operation so this m this m is closed this m is closed with respect to algebraic operation as well as leads operation it's closed with respect to this m m is closed we have seen this m is closed with respect to algebraic and algebraic meaning with respect to addition scalar multiplication and multiplication of two major functions is again a major function there are all major function and and also with respect to the lates operation lates means meet and chain that we have seen lates operations so therefore this m is therefore m is m is m is uh, it's an algebra actually uh, it's also a function space is a function space is a function space and also an algebra and an algebra okay so this m is a function space actually and it's also an algebra so algebra mean is uh, it's a vector space with a ring structure as well and that's that's fine certain properties uh, so that you know the definition of algebra it's also a function space it's closed with respect to these uh, this uh, the with respect to the leads operation actually yeah? so uh, now uh, uh, we have theorem uh, we have uh, we, we define this uh, first we define the the convergence in major okay first we have following definition here uh, so then we uh, uh, then we uh, see certain properties uh, of that convergence in major. So first we have a definition of convergence in major. As you can see, as you can see, as you can see, Fn of measurable function is of, of measurable functions converges in major we say it's converges in major converges in major converges in converges in major converges in major to a function f to a function f which is also a major function belongs to m this fn they are also in m because it's a collection of major so you can say major functions and this so you can converges in major to a major function f belongs to m if if of uh, and 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 we write it as if uh, if uh, if uh, if for all epsilon positive for all epsilon positive so we have this limit an approach to infinity mu star of the set x belongs to x such that mod of fn x minus fx greater or equal to epsilon is equal to zero so this limit is equal to zero okay if for all epsilon positive this limit is equal to zero limit and approach to infinity mu star of the the, the set where this difference is greater or equal to epsilon is zero then we say this so you can say fn it converges in major to this function here okay uh, now uh, we have a symbol for this convergence in major if uh, if fn converges in major to f and then we write it as then we this we get is f and okay write it as f and converges to f in major mu okay the mu means it this convergence is in major okay f and converges to f in major mu 
Okay, that's the notation for this. Now uh, we have certain properties. The first theorem uh, is uh, let fn and gn be two sequences of major rule functions. Let fn and gn be two sequences of measurable functions and let f and g be two major functions f and g belongs to m belongs to m then following hold then following hold and then following hold First one is uh, if fn converges to f in major mu and gn converges to g in major mu, then uh, this combination, this linear combination, alpha fn plus beta because we know that this linear combination is again a sequence of major functions and it will converge to this function this is again a major function because f is major g is major so this alpha f plus beta g is also major and this converges to this this weakness so it will converge to this function in major mu okay that's the first property and second property are so they are all well defined convergence in major because this is now sequence so of major function this is again this one it's also a major function so this is well defined at this one this sequence so converges to this function this uh, this function in major view so uh, second uh, uh, we have if fn converges to f if fn converges to f in major mu in major mu and if it converges to function actually and fn also converges to g in major mu in major mu then both f and g are equal actually the limit is actually unique f is equal to g almost everything So that's a statement of this uh, theorem. Uh, we have to prove these two properties. Uh, really, uh, so let's uh, prove this first part. Uh, so <coughs> let, uh, let's assume that alpha and beta are not equal to zero. So assume that, assume that alpha beta not equal to zero because if they are zero then we have nothing to prove actually yeah if one of them is equal to zero then uh, we have just a single can which uh, then at that time we have to choose a single sequence actually so uh, that means we can assume that uh, these are non-zero numbers actually yeah so uh, now uh, we have uh, we have the following triangle inequality we have we have this triangle inequality uh, mod of alpha and f and x okay. plus beta g and x plus uh, plus this is not alpha and this is just alpha actually sorry plus uh, beta g and x And then uh, we have minus times uh, minus times uh, we have minus times uh, alpha fx plus uh, beta gx. This mod, okay. And you can see uh, we use the triangle inequality. This is less or equal to mod of alpha into mod of f and x minus f of x plus mod of beta into mod of g and x minus oh sorry it's mod here uh, 
it's small okay it's your mod okay this is uh this is the triangle inequality uh this is the triangle inequality and uh so now uh, uh, so this is uh, this is uh, this is trivial okay you can easily see, uh, see this this triangle inequality now uh, let epsilon be any positive number let then then this then this inclusion holds then the set x belongs to x such that uh, such that mod of alpha mod of alpha f and x plus beta g and x minus times uh, alpha fx plus beta g of x this mod so not it's a set uh, this set uh, this mod is it's greater equal to epsilon and then we have this set this set x belongs to x set the mod of alpha f and x plus beta g and x minus times alpha f x plus beta g x greater or equal to epsilon this is subset of this set is subset of x belongs to x such that uh, such that f and x minus f x f and x minus f x greater or equal to epsilon by twice alpha twice mod alpha this set union this set x belongs to x such that mod of g and x minus gx <coughs> greater or equal to epsilon by twice mod beta So this uh, inclusion holds actually. This follows from this triangle inequality. Now actually, this is uh, suppose uh, <coughs> suppose uh, suppose this mod suppose x is here. That means this mod is greater equal to epsilon. So it means that you can see this. Actually, it is this mod. Mod of this is greater equal to epsilon. If mod of this is greater equal to epsilon, then then clearly either mod of this is greater equal to epsilon by twice mod alpha, or this one is greater or equal to epsilon by mod of twice beta because if both are greater because if both are if both are less if both are less than epsilon by, this is less than epsilon by two ice mod alpha this is also less than epsilon by two ice mod alpha then uh, then then you can see this uh, mod of alpha times this mod of f and x minus fx is less than epsilon and here uh, here you can see mod of beta times mod of gnx minus gx is less than epsilon so both are less than epsilon then their sum both are less than epsilon by two then their sum would be will be will be less than epsilon but uh, their sum is this one this is the sum actually and this sum is greater or equal to this sum this uh, this mod and this mod is greater or equal to epsilon so here on on this side it's less than epsilon but on, on this uh, if we see this inequality it's greater to equal to epsilon that means epsilon is strictly less than epsilon which is a contradiction so also uh, you can you can prove this uh, so i will i, I will uh, i will name this inequality this triangle inequality as uh, uh, let's let's name this as capital a okay capital a so i will use this inequality i will show that this is subset of this union so let's choose x belongs to let 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 x belongs to this set let x belongs to the set x belongs to x such that such that mod of alpha f and x plus beta g and x minus times alpha f x plus beta g x greater or equal to epsilon okay suppose x is there so this means uh, suppose let me choose y here uh, to avoid the confusion uh, let me choose y here suppose y is in this set x so which implies that y satisfies this property this inequality so which implies that mod of alpha times f and y 
plus beta times g n y minus times alpha f y plus beta g of y. This mod is greater or equal to epsilon. So, but this one, this is uh, less or equal to certain. Uh, this is uh, this mean is mod of alpha times mod of f and y minus f of y plus mod of beta times mod of g and y minus g of y. This mod it is greater or equal to this by b, but this one this is greater or equal to epsilon. So I will write this as greater or equal to epsilon by e. Okay? by triangle inequality e now uh, from this you can conclude that this implies this implies mod of f and y minus f y is greater or equal to epsilon by twice mod of alpha or 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 this mod of g and y minus g of y is greater or equal to epsilon divided by two is mod of beta because for if possible both if, if both are less this is strictly less than epsilon this is also strictly less than epsilon that means mod of alpha times this one is is less than epsilon and mod of beta times this one is less than epsilon then their sum will epsilon by two sorry mod of alpha times this difference is mod of f and y minus f of y is less than epsilon by two and mod of beta times mod of g and y minus g y is less than epsilon by two, then their sum will be less than epsilon. But here you can see that their sum is greater or equal to epsilon with the contraction. So therefore this must hold. If this is greater or equal to epsilon, then either this is greater or equal to epsilon by two i mod of alpha, or this one is greater or equal to epsilon by two i mod of beta. So which implies that, which implies that y belongs to which implies that which implies that y belongs to the set x belongs to x say that mod of f and x minus fx greater or equal to epsilon divided by two is mod of alpha union because it is either a, it's either this holds or this either this x belongs to x such that mod of g and x minus g of x greater or equal to epsilon divided by two is mod of beta so that means uh, uh, this inclusion hold is uh, so from this inclusion uh, we can see that uh, we can see that uh, since uh, since uh, so this, uh, therefore, so this implies, you can see this implies the set X uh, belongs to X such that uh, mod of uh, alpha F and X plus beta G and X minus times alpha F X plus beta G X greater or equal to epsilon is subset of x belongs to x such that mod of uh, f and x minus fx greater or equal to epsilon divided by twice mod of alpha union x belongs to x such that mod of g and x minus gx greater or equal to epsilon divided by two is mod of beta <coughs> okay <coughs> let's apply mu star on both sides because uh, mu star is monotone uh, so this implies mu star of this set uh, x belongs to x such that uh, so let me uh, let me denote this by say let me denote this by say HM, okay. I will denote this by HM. So I get mod of H and X greater or equal to epsilon, okay, is less or equal to mu star of this union, which is less or equal to mu star of first set plus mu star of the second set. It's mu star of uh, 
<coughs> mu star of this uh, x belongs to x such that mod of f n x minus f of x greater or equal to epsilon divided by two twice mod of alpha plus uh, plus uh, mu star of the set x belongs to x such that mod of g n x minus g of x mod this greater or equal to epsilon divided by two twice mod of beta okay so mu star of this uh, where h n x is this one uh, is less or equal to this since uh, f n x converges to f n major mu so therefore limit of this as n approaching to infinity for each epsilon positive here epsilon is epsilon here, here the positive number is epsilon divided by twice mod alpha and in this case the positive number is epsilon divided by twice mod of theta so limit of this is also zero limit of this is zero because f n converges to f in major and also limit of this is also zero because g n converges to g in major okay so that means limit of this will equal to zero which can this one this converges to zero this converges to zero as an approach to infinity so this implies that uh, this implies limit an approach to infinity x belongs to x mod of h n x what is what is h h is actually alpha times f n x plus beta times gnx minus alpha <coughs> fx plus beta times gx greater or equal to epsilon okay this limit is equal to zero because it's less or equal to zero but it cannot be less it's here mu star so mu star of this is zero so which implies that uh, by definition of convergence in major which implies that alpha fn plus beta g n converges to alpha f plus beta g in major mu that uh, proves the first part uh, now we have second part uh, which i will leave as an exercise uh, the second part so this is uh, exercise for you So uh, proof here, uh, it's uh, you can see also you can see the proof on uh, elements also 147 at page number 147. Uh, if you want to check it, uh, uh, it's uh, it's very simple. You can do it uh, easily. So uh, the next theorem is uh, <laughs> the next theorem is. Uh, If uh, if this its statement is this uh, if uh, if f n if f n uh, is this we can some major function is is okay I will write this as if uh, this f n converges to f in major mu so it means that this f n is a sequence of major functions and f is also a major function. As an f and converges to f in major mu, then uh, uh, then this holds. Then then <coughs> then uh, <coughs> then it's f and plus f and plus. It converges to f plus in major mu, and f and minus converges to f minus in major mu. Okay. So uh, proof follows from this inequality and the uh, rest you can do yourself uh, and you have to verify this inequality also, which is a uh, mod of fn plus minus fn minus minus fn minus it's lesser equal to it's lesser equal to fn sorry it's uh, fn uh, It's here fn plus minus f plus okay minus f plus is lesser or equal to fn minus f fn minus f and second is the uh, mod of fn minus minus f minus it's modulus is lesser or equal to mod of 
fn minus f. So these are simple inequalities. You prove first these inequalities, then you can easily verify this one. Okay, so whenever x belongs to a set where f and x minus f x greater or equal to epsilon, then x belongs to this set. Whenever x belongs to this set where this is greater or equal to epsilon, then x belongs to this set. But here the limit approaches zero. Similarly, whenever x belongs to this set where f and minus minus f minus is greater or equal to epsilon, then x will be here where f and x minus f is greater or equal to epsilon. But since as f and converges to f in major mu, so therefore the major of this set where f and x minus f x mod of f and x minus f x greater to the epsilon converge to zero so therefore this will also converge to zero so this is very simple you just verify these uh, two inequalities okay yeah. now uh, we have a theorem uh, which is the relation uh, between the convergence and major and uh, and this uh, point twice converges. Okay, it states that if a sequence is f n of major functions, if a sequence uh, f n of major functions uh, such that uh, f n converges in major. To f such that uh, such that this sequence converges to f in major mu in major mu then there exists a sub sequence then then there exists a sub sequence f k n of fn such that uh, this fkn it converges to f point wise converges to f point wise almost everywhere <clears throat> So uh, the uh, uh, the proof of this theorem, we will do this proof uh, in our next lecture, uh, and in the next lecture we will complete this section. Uh, then uh, then we have then we have the last section of this lecture uh, series, uh, which is the which 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 is the uh, Lebesgue integral functions. So for this, we first define those upper functions. Then we try to define the Lebesgue integral functions. So by the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the next lecture, we'll complete this section. Then we'll go for the last section of this lecture series. Okay. Thank you.